Hey guys, so here we have another of my slideshows where today I'm going to introduce to you guys Vincent van Gogh and since we are not having lessons like normal I have decided to do quite an easy introduction with 21 facts about van Gogh so let's start off with the fact that in, despite the fact that van Gogh today is a very loved and very successful artist or remembered as someone who's very successful, he actually wasn't at all during his lifetime. As a matter of fact, he only sold one painting. Um, he was born in 1853 in the Netherlands to Theodorus van Gogh, who was a country minister. And um, it's very important to remember here that perhaps that the fact that his father was a minister had some impact not only on how van Gogh became as a person, but also as an artist. Um, he was named after his paternal grandfather, but in fact the name had already been used once before to a child that was born previously to his parents, um, who had died at childbirth just a year prior to his own uh, birth. And so, which also is quite interesting that this actually happened to another very famous artist, Dali, who, as we know, became quite obsessed with this idea of being born again. So, much of Van Gogh's work is due to his uh, sister-in-law's attribution, Joanna. And Joanna was the wife of his brother Theo, who, if you know anything about Van Gogh, he had a very close and very complicated relationship with. He was the oldest of six children. Uh, his younger brother would go on to become an art dealer and would end up the primary and often sole supporter of his elder brother and his art. Uh, Van Gogh's most famous work is the Starry Night and it was completed while he was staying at an asylum where he was recovering from a nervous breakdown. Uh, as we know he had a very fiery temper and he would go through quite a few of these nervous breakdowns throughout his life. Uh, his name is commonly pronounced Van Gogh like I'm saying in this video but it's actually pronounced Van Gogh so it depends on how good your Dutch is. Uh, he didn't begin painting until his late 20s. Prior to this, he worked first for his uncle as an art dealing company and later at the gallery in London. At some point in his life, he even considered becoming a priest or a minister just like his father. But however, he did not follow through with his plan. Van Gogh was known for having a strong and difficult personality. Friends and colleagues felt that he had a penchant for self-martyrdom, so in other words, they felt like he was perhaps a little bit dramatic. Uh, at some point, he was working as a missionary in the coal mining region of Belgium. So this is a period of time where he spent a lot of time moving around people that were having very difficult, hard labors, and he would experiment and be fascinated by this spiritual awakening that inspired him and that we also can see in some other works uh, around this period of time for example if we are looking at the works of Millet uh, he was largely self-taught and only received formal artistic training for about four months just a few years before his death um, his paintings were very often painted and completed relatively quickly. They were spontaneous and intuitive. Um, at one point, he once told his brother, when anyone says that such and such is done too quickly, you can reply that they have looked at it too fast, which is an interesting quote. It, it suggests that it's not him as an artist that is working too fast. It's you as a viewer who is looking too fast. Uh, he did suffer from some degree of mental illness throughout his life. However, um, he seemed to be relatively balanced, but fell into a deep decline in the 1880s. During this time, he said to have eaten his paint and some tr sometimes drank turpentine, which is a solution that we use to dilute paints with. Um, the, the painter Paul Gauguin was introduced to Vincent's life around this period of time when his mental health was declining uh, on, on the encouragement of his brother Theo. Within a matter of weeks, the two artists were in a state of constant argument and could barely stand to be in the same room. I think that everybody knows the most famous anecdote of Van Gogh's life. 
when he actually cut off his left ear in fact he didn't cut off the whole ear he just cut off the lobe which is the lower part of the ear and as the story goes he then uh, offered it as a kind of gift to one of the prostitutes living in the in the village quite an odd present after this incident he ended up staying in a hotel uh, unfortunately he fell into a deep depression to help with this he would paint at home during the day but he would spend his nights at the hospital towards the end of his life fellow citizens of the town of Arles signed a petition saying that he was a danger to the community and this led him again to commit himself to an asylum there is that sensation of it seems as if Van Gogh spent most of his life feeling as an outcast but perhaps also if he was quite uh, dramatic and self-absorbed I can I can see why uh, and also the fact that he did cut off his ear Van Gogh ultimately committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest unfortunately it was not a clean shot and he did not die until 30 hours later uh, Vincent's brother Theo died just a few months after him and Theo was buried in Utrecht to commemorate the two brothers exceptional close and special relationship uh, mo much of Van Gogh's work has actually been lost as many people who owned his work initially thought it would be worthless so interestingly here he is one of those artists that really did suffer throughout his relatively short life and gained great success posthumous right next presentation we are gonna look at some of Van Gogh's work a little bit more in depth but until then have a good day and bye